Hey, hey, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. If you like what you see, consider hitting that subscribe button, the bell if you want updates. Check me out on Instagram at watch underscore complications and check out my website, watchcomplications.com. Not all that long ago, for a previous video, I showed the process of making custom movement holders. It's one of my favorite aspects of custom watchmaking. I've shown several videos on that process for different components, holders, spacer rings, that sort of thing. And I had a project for a client where I had a very generic dive case that I also reviewed. I'll put all the links and uh, videos in the, in the description below and I'll put them up here and around. It really is one of the most enjoyable aspects of what I do. For some reason is here's this case, here's this movement, can you create an interface, a holder that puts them together? Uh, and I love doing that. So with that example, I showed the process of, of making the custom holder for the quartz movement going this generic dive case. I'm now working on the holder for the mechanical NH35 going in the same case. What I often do is if I have something interesting to share like that for other watch modders that they might be interested in the same sort of thing or how you do something, I'll post it, I'll share it on like a Facebook group or forum here or there. And I did that and then I got this big question. Here's the big interest. SKX cases. Watch modding community, Seiko mods are the thing, one of the big things. And so you can easily get a great variety of cases. Some of them have the crown at three, some of four. There's different shapes, sizes. There's some conversion cases, and there's just a lot of parts you can get out there for Seiko mods. And people get these cases and they're like, I wanna put a particular movement in this case, not the movements that maybe those cases were designed to hold. But in doing that, the most common question I got back was, could I put a Ronda 515 movement in an SKX case? And the Ronda 515 movement, it's a very common GMT quartz movement. It's a nice movement. I've used them before in some of my custom builds, actually. I've used uh, the dual time movement, so the 24D, uh, but more common is the 24H. The 24D has a wheel uh, that turns a 24-hour wheel, uh, whereas the H, 24H, has a 24-hour hand. Very common movement, and you got a very common case, the XKX cases and there's a few different, again, design styles, I said, yeah, I mean, it, it's a quartz movement, so the height's not gonna be an issue. Does it fit inside the case? It's more of a matter of where is that with the stem height overall, and you have a holder that can, you know, fit really well inside the case, hold it tight against the case back, and secure the movement in there so it doesn't rattle around and move, that kind of stuff. And so I said, you know what? Sounds like a fun challenge. I'll take that on. A lot of people seemed interested in it. Why not? So that's what this video is about. I did it. Now I'm not going to go through the full process of creating this holder. I've shown sort of what that looks like in earlier videos. What I'm going to do is sort of walk you back through. I have the case and movement and everything put together. I'm going to go backwards and pull it apart, show you how it fits together and why I made the choices I did, the options you might have if you wanted to do this, and show you what it looks like. So we have the Ronda 51524H sitting in an SKX, specifically 007 case, and let's take a look at it. Of course, I'm not gonna let you get away today without seeing what's on my wrist. It's the Vario 1918 trench. This is a 37 millimeter steel, and I've got the white dial uh, with the white loom. You can see the red 12 there, beautiful. Harkens back to a great vintage style with those wired lugs. The video review of this is posted in the description and in the video here. So you can see I have the watch head here. Now, it's just a test case, so it's a little bit messy. I don't have all the, the dust and debris cleaned up, so don't, don't let that get in the way of what's going on here. Also, I don't have the bezel on it. Again, just sort of showing what this thing looks like put together. Uh, in terms of the dial movement and the holder. So this case I have is, it's from Crystal Times. It's one of the common uh, sources for Seiko parts. This is an SKX 007 uh, dimension case. I've got the crown at three. You can get them with the crown at four. And then there's other styles, like I said. I have a pretty tall top hat crystal on this. Again, I don't have the bezel installed currently. So what I've done is I've got in here a test dial. Again, don't let this get in the way. I've done all kinds of things like testing water slide decals, uh, putting on some loom to see how that did in the oven, 
all kinds of testing stuff I do on this channel. So just a, a, a junky old dial, but it's the only 28 and a half millimeter dial I had in stock that would fit on the Ronda 515 movement. So even though the movement has a date wheel, this doesn't have a date cut out, but there is a date underneath of there. But anyway, you can see that I have the basics of the case. I've got the case, the crown and stem, and I've got the chapter ring in here. Of course, the case and the chapter ring, these are kind of like OEM parts, and I've got the case back here, all right? So what's inside of here right now? I've got the dial, I've got the Ronda 515, and it's right here inside the case. And if you hear any shaking around, that's just the uh, spring bars. Nice tight fit. No shaking, no gaps, and what did I do to make this movement work in this case? That 51524H inside of this SKX case. Well, here's the deal. There are two parts to this build, and it could be one, and so I'll show you those two options. So first, uh, notice we've got the chapter ring here, but between the chapter ring and the dial, you can see that there is a white spacer ring. All right, so one thing you have to contend with whenever you're fitting a movement to a case that isn't designed for that particular movement, the number one concern is, well, okay, overall height will it fit, but the stem height. The height of where the stem goes into the movement has to be at the right spot. It can't be up or down a little bit. It's too much tension on a, on a stem and it'll snap. It's got to be at the right height. And a lot of times what you have to do, particularly with quartz movements, is add space dial side. And that's what I've done here. There is an option to add it on the movement side, and I'll discuss that here shortly. So what I had to do was create a custom spacer. I've done this before. I've done it in white for this example. But it blends in nicely. It'll look either good blending in if you have a white dial, put in a white spacer, or if you're wanting contrast, if you had a black chapter ring and a black dial, maybe putting a white space between will look good. And with 3D printing being what it is, you can print in all kinds of colors. I happen to have black, white, silver currently, so I could print in any of those colors. You can even print in metal, uh, like a copper or uh, you know stainless steel look. It, it just depends on what kind of a 3D printer a person has and what they want to take the time to do. But I've done, for this simple test, white. And so you see that is the first component that makes this setup work. Now, what will look different to the eye versus on camera, particularly with this high top hat crystal, is the spacer is flush against the ring. It doesn't jut out at all, even though it might look like a, a little bit here and there. Uh, but it looks great. Uh, it's basically hidden, and you're only going to see it if you're really looking for it. But I think it adds a nice handmade custom touch. And again, it can provide a good point of offset if that's what you're into. Let me pop in here just a little bit closer so you can see what that looks like. Again, ignore any dust, particles, fibers you see under the crystal. That's just because it's in a test state. The dial too has paint chipped around it. So, you know, that's not my concern here. My concern is to see the fit of the spacer and it looks pretty good. I'm gonna slowly unwind this. And let's see what this looks like on the inside. Okay, see there's a gasket here, which will quickly fall out, I'm sure. Put the case back here. You can see it's got this interior height on it. It's important to consider when making a holder. And then the white you can see is the custom holder I've got placed on the inside. And it takes a little bit of time to get the height right on these things. You can see I've got some little tabs here on top to add pressure against the top of the case back. Visually, you can see how close you are just by how flush that might be setting with the edge of a case. Now it depends on design, how deep the threads go um, on the case back, that kind of stuff. But that's what this looks like. All right, so let's talk about how this thing fits. 
I'm going to get my screwdriver here. This is a screw down crown. So pop that out. And this needs to be, <laughs> if you didn't know this already, see this is where you're going to press to remove the stem, but you need to have it in the proper setting. You can see that tab flips into place there. And then use an appropriate sized screwdriver and that'll just pop right out. So again, just kind of working backwards here. We have the spacer ring on the front. That helps get the movement to the right height so that the center of the hole for the stem is in the center of the case hole for the, the stem and crown. You want those to be exactly where they need to be. And so that's why we have the spacer. So let's pop this out, get the gasket out of the way. I guess I can show you first inside the case. There we have the spacer ring setting next to the chapter ring. And this is just a rough example. It really doesn't even matter how it comes out on the outside because that's hidden anyway. What I care about is the interior and how smooth that looks. So let me pop this out of here. Sometimes I have to clean them up a little bit. I haven't cleaned this one up much. And like I said, I don't care about what the exterior looks like in terms of how smooth it is. What I care about is the interior. So that will sit down on the inside and it's got to be, of course, diameter has to be just right. So that sits flush the way you want it to uh, on the inside. So that's what that looks like. Now, the custom holder part, again, this takes a lot of trial and error. Let me pop out here. Let me show you something. So like I might start with something like this where I didn't have the two sides connected. It was just a gap that I cut. You can see that I have a notch here that fits down inside of the tab on the movement and I have the little notches on top again to press against the case back. So one thing I have to do is get the height right overall. Got to get the, the thickness. This one's a little bit thicker. You can see the walls are thicker and getting that correct so that it can sit inside the case back without too much friction and then it fits around the movement just right that kind of thing so go through a series of these prints and then I get into things like overall height see the difference there as an example how much leeway I have how thick to make this connection to give this a little bit more stability instead of having it completely separate all those kinds of things um, along with, well, what kind of a, a circumference or I guess diameter I need on this little tab that fits into the movement. So it's a process. And then you finally get down to something that fits just right. It's got the right interior diameter, the right exterior diameter. We got the right clearance here for the, the stem. The tabs are at the right height, the overall things at the right height, and that the little tab here also fits well within the movement you can see here. Let me show you what this looks like in CAD. I'll start with the spacer ring. You can see it's just simple two circles and you make a solid uh, cylinder and then you subtract one part from the other and you end up with basically a hollow cylinder. Then it's just test printing. It's getting, you know, if you want, you know, what particular level of uh, quality standard, fine, extra fine, that sort of thing, and getting that feel just right for the type of material that you're using in your 3D printer. By the way, I'm using a Lulzbot Mini 2, that's my 3D printer, and I'm using a Polylite PLA right now for these test prints. Then we have the holder. You can see this series of iterations here. You can see the little uh, notches I put on top. Uh, you can see the rectangle I used to cut out the gap uh, for the stem and you can see how I was playing around with getting the height just right. Essentially, you end up creating a, a solid and exporting it to an STL file type, and then that's what you send to your 3D printer. And so that's what it looks like in CAD. I'm not gonna walk through that. I've done that in earlier videos, what it looks like creating this. So after that and all this print testing, getting it just right, and that will vary from printer to printer. Here's the movement on the dial. There's the stem hole location. On opposite of that, you can see there's this little half circle. That's where that I made that tab for to go right there. And 
this is just the right size so it almost snaps into place you can see that there we go so you can see the the stem height just right you can see the layers of PLA printed there and you can sort of see this half circle tab that really helps when the case back is sitting around it and you're starting to turn it and tighten the case back down the stem will keep the movement in place but this also helps keep that movement in place from jiggling around or from rotating any if there is any friction against the case because again this is the exact size it needs to be one of the considerations is this exterior you got to have enough room for this to fit inside of the case back but the holder is not going to spin because that friction is not too tight and a couple key considerations one is with the case back all the way down again all that pressure against it do we have enough room for the stem it's just right and you can kind of see as i turn this it's kind of jittery that's because it just fits but it doesn't want to pull that movement holder along with it and that tab helps keep it in place so it's the perfect fit fits like a glove and then that means we've got the exact right amount of space look on both sides for that stem and that will fit perfectly down inside the case again the thing is inside of this case you can see there's this gap between the holder and the edge of the case that's for the threads case back that needs to be able to fit in there that's why that fit has to be spot on it's got to be exact and you can see that there's a little bit of movement here if you just got the the dial the movement and the stem connected you don't want that to be shaking around of course this prevents that from happening but you have to have this size just right so it's got enough space the whole way around that once that's in there it's nice and happy and content now there's one other option you could do from a design perspective let's say you wanted this dial flush against the chapter ring instead of having a spacer between the dial and the chapter ring well you could do that but what you'd have to do is put a spacer between the movement and the back of the dial to lift up the movement about uh, in this case about half a millimeter so you're gonna have to have a space between the two and could create a custom spacer there it means the feet won't fit all the way down inside of the movement just about halfway down which is fine it will still you know stay secure so imagine this uh, we're gonna lift up the movement just a little bit again this is just for illustrative purposes so you're going to have like a gap so let's say there's a spacer between here you can make a custom spacer that sits back here that lifts the movement up you can use this same holder around the back but then you're going to need longer posts for the hands because uh, those pins are going to be sitting lower further back toward the case back you can see it's not quite it's flush at the top so you could add a spacer on this side between the dial and the movement that would allow the dial to sit more snug against the chapter ring without the spacer on the front side you're just going to have to have hands with longer posts on them so it can reach further down uh, inside of the case to get to the pins i prefer the spacer ring on the front uh, it's just it, it looks fine I, but that's me but some people might want that spacer on the back either way would be okay but this is you know a perfectly useful and usable solution for fitting a ronda 515 24h inside of an skx case snug fit looks beautiful and there you go i don't know why but i just love these particular kinds of projects i guess because it's a problem to solve as a information scientist a computer scientist problem solving is my thing so i love drafting up holders uh, doing test prints getting the perfect fit and then seeing it all come together it's just a, it's just a fun experience so for all of you that are into watch tinkering modding hopefully you found this helpful if you're interested in uh, something like this maybe this particular combination movement holder spacer or you're after something else Go to my website, watchcomplications.com. You can find information there. Of course, it's linked in the description below as well. But hopefully you got something out of the video. Consider subscribing if you want to 
keep up with all things watch complications here on the channel and check me out on Instagram, watch underscore complications, and of course the website. And this has been fun, but for now, I am out.